to come and win the tournament. Yeah. And this is where every shot just becomes that little bit more difficult. You think of every single shot and every option. Yeah, he's got one kind of shot to play here. He's going to play the plant here first. That wobbled a little bit. Yeah, he's got sort of one shot just to get nice and neat and tidy on any of the three in the middle of the table. Because once he gets there, he can choose whichever ball he wants to play the one on the left-hand side. You've won umpteen tournaments and titles in your time, Mick. This frame is always the one that just tends to be that difficult one to win. Yeah, just remind me, remind me when it was again. I can't, can't quite remember. Yeah. <laughs> no, but yeah, you just, here you just kind of, you're trying to keep your, your emotions in check. So you're excited, you know the chance has come, kind of don't think you've won before you've won, if that makes sense. So kind of, you know, I think this is an experience thing. With experience, you realise you've still got to get the balls in the pockets you know what I mean it's Jack has won big titles he's a world champion in 2015 this would be one of the biggest of the bunch calls his extension just needs to figure out these final four balls and land on the does he ball. play for the one down the round now or is it last he's elected to play last okay so it's one big shot is that red just above the balk line. Just wants to land nicely in behind. Oh, I'd, I'd have liked to have seen him gone through a ball there. Yeah, he's given himself a little bit more yeah, angle, he's but left he's himself very a, straight he's here. He's left himself a touch straight there, has he not? He was always down on it quick enough. Yeah, he was a bit straight, wasn't he? That's, right. a, that's a fraction careless. Oh, it's made this finish gone from unmissable to well you've got to you've got to do yeah, it now. I fancy him, don't get me wrong, but it's never easy to win a tournament this big. Nice. Is that a dream? Just. And now he knows, and so do this crowd here in Birmingham. Jack Whelan is an ultimate pool champion. Pool Series Event 3 winner, Jack The Wonder beats the Wizard. An awesome performance. You've earned that. That's, that's a tough tournament to win. I know you've, you've won a world title. You've won plenty of tournaments in your time. This one feels big, doesn't it? Probably the biggest. Obviously, I won the world before, but... I, I can see it means a lot to you, mate. And you obviously set yourself really high expectations when you came over to Ultimate Pool. Obviously, you, you wanted to play against the best players, test your metal, and you had a great run in the Pro Cup, wanted to go far. You put pressure on yourself, but you made it, mate. I knew I'd win one. I just said you this to you yesterday when we sat over there, and I said, look, I will, I will come good at some point. I didn't realise it would be one day. Well, look, mate, I'm not going to keep you for any longer. You've earned this moment. It is all yours. Going to bring in tournament director Neil Toms to make the presentations. Your winner is Jack Whelan. Welcome back to the Ultimate Pool Pro Series. Stephen Jameson, Simon Webb, joining this year by our winner of the last match, Sean Chibberfield. Chibi, congratulations. That was graft, <laughs> I'm going to say. Yeah, it was. It was, but it was so hot out there. Honestly, I don't know if anyone else has said about that, but it's so difficult to... Well, we moan about it in here, so I think yeah, people are getting it. Is, it, I think, yeah. it is ridiculous, yeah. It is hard to play your, your best. You know, your cue gets stuck in your hand and all sorts, but everything went wrong out there, to be honest, for both of us. Um, and at 6-1, I'm thinking, I've played just as bad as he is. And I'm, I'm th I think I'm through really. And then obviously at six four towards the end there, and the way that break broke for me, where I had to go yellows, and I knew I couldn't clear them up. 
reds were dollies and thought this is written for a six red but luckily he messed the reds up in the end yeah that was a bizarre match i thought we were nailed on for a six red because it almost felt like he'd checked out the match at six one and you almost fed on to you that you kind of thought you'd won he thought you'd won and it was kind of it, it did threaten to turn around yeah bit, i did it did look like he'd kind of given up he gives that impression sometimes but you yeah. know he's a dangerous player so if he can get on a roll like he did there you know he could have easily come back and, and nicked it but to be honest i've I've got a new cue. I don't know, don't know if anyone knows, but I've been playing quite well with it. But that's the first time, obviously, I've played on that main table, and the adjustment to that cloth compared to any other table is so so different. Yeah, yeah, very quick. But I've always adapted with my other cue quite well to it. I've always enjoyed playing out there. But yeah. with this new feel and new cue, it was so difficult to find my time. And, and I double hit the white on a shot, yeah, which yeah, is just that. bad time more, more than anything. Um, so yeah, it looked like he was struggling with the pace of the table as well. It felt like every time he made a mistake, it was because he was overhitting the shot. So as well as the heat out there, it felt like almost the pace of the table was catching you both out. Yeah, it did. Yeah, I had a couple of big bounces. Well, I thought they were big bounces, yeah. but it might just be me, you know. Yeah. But you got to look for excuses out there. You yeah, know, why not blame <laughs> something else? So. Yeah. Well, you got to get your excuses in when you win the match, and then it doesn't look like sour grapes when it, when it happens. Exactly, That's what yeah, it's all about, exactly. isn't it? <laughs> but I wanted to ask you about your, your next round match, because I, I know you're aware, Carl Sutton in the next round, you two obviously know each other really, really well. Pairs Cup champions. And I just wanted to ask you first, nicely Carl got a bit of a run at a tournament for the first time, it feels like, all year in the yeah. Pro Series, really. He's got a few results under his belt, and started to remind people, oh, actually, he's just, really good. I was just going to say, I'm delighted that he's had a little run. You know, he's beat a couple of good players there. Um, and obviously, if I play like that, he'll go one step further. So <laughs> I, need to, I need to improve. He's obviously my pairs partner, a mate of mine. So I'll be happy for him if he was to go through. But obviously, once you get out there, you want to beat each other up. So that's, it, that's the plan. Is there anything you can do? to? Because obviously, it's not much time now between playing and now when you play colour. I think it's the next match or the match after that. So it's not long. Is there anything you can do? You're just going to try and get away, try and freshen up? Is there yeah, I'll, you have, can do? I'll probably have my eighth shower of the day, yeah. cold shower. <laughs> um, take my clothes off, lay on the bed, come back down about half hour later and try and go again. You've not put, put your clothes back on there, so are yeah, we in for a real show? Yeah, you don't want to see that. No, make sure it's post 10 o'clock, man. We should be all right. <laughs> but I wanted to get your thoughts before we let you leave you, Sean. Um, great match coming up next. Uh, Mick Hill versus Chris Melling, two, two of the greats of the game. Is this something you, you're going to try and stick around and keep an eye on? It feels like that arena is filling up very, very quickly. Yeah, not well. If that's filling up, I'm getting out of there because that'd be way too hot. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, that's obviously one for the, for the spectators. But as a player still in the tournament, I'm just going to focus on myself. So I'll be back to the room and making sure I'm ready. Get that cold shower in. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Uh, sorry, this is our chance now to do a little bit of a preview work. Fantastic game coming up, isn't it? Yeah, it's what we do this for, isn't it? You know, two of the greats of the game. Um, and more than that, I think just what we saw this afternoon, they were probably the two best players in the afternoon session that we saw on the main, main TV table. They were both absolutely fantastic. Mick won his match 7-1 with seven visits to the table and made the game look so much easier than it really is. Chris threatened to do the same thing. He just missed his last chance at 6-0 up. Uh, ended up having to sort of scrape over the line 7-4, um, but played brilliantly to get to that point, uh, expecting really big things from both of them. I expect them both to play a very high level. We've seen previous from them in terms of ultimate pool in a final before. Uh, just excited, a tough match to call because both are playing well. Yeah, absolutely. And to be honest, I remember a match that was posted actually quite recently on the, on the old ultimate pool socials, your full match in the Grand Slam with Mick Kill that ridiculous yeah. hour of flawless pool, which I think ended 8-7 in the end. And you almost know that when Mick's playing well, you've, you've got to go flawless. You can't afford to make a mistake. That's the level Abs he's at. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, I've played Mick before that probably three or four times. And he's beaten me every time, but I've never performed against him. And I just played out of my skin there, and I still nearly got beat. <laughs> and if he'd have beaten me 8-7, seven, seven, I'd have just... Well, I don't know what I'd have done, but I'd have, <laughs> I'd have had a few words with him. Yeah. Just say, you know, <laughs> can you re lay up, you know... He's up against me, yeah. um, but I think even he'll admit he's he played flawless in that fr in that match as well. He had seven chances, I had eight, and it was eight seven. So you can't play much better than that. Do you think in this game it's just purely going to come down to that side? I think we noticed Chris seemed to handle the conditions a little bit worse. I think in his own words earlier on, is that going to play a part in it at all? Or do you think, think you'll part sort it out? Part of that might be down to his cue action. He always talks about the fact he's got a really long cue action, and then the quicker the table gets out there, the harder it is with that what light white for him to, to control it. So when it gets really, you know, when he needs to be very, um, you know, tight with that cue ball, sometimes he can get a little bit loose. Um, but I don't think the conditions are going to have too much to play. I think it will come down to the number of chances. Um, I don't expect Mick to, to gift too many away. Um, I think Chris, Chris can just clear from anywhere at any point. So it's going to be fascinating to see, but it could just come down to the breaks, really. 
Yep, can't wait to get going. Sean, congratulations. We'll see you later Thank on. You. Looking forward to that one. And it's time now to get on our next last 16 match. Should be a belter. It needs no more introduction. It's Mick Hill versus Chris Melling next. So you can't just roll up to the yellow at the bottom. I'm just seeing it a slightly different way. Do you think this is a double? It is a double. What a shot. What a shot. Well, we talk about it all the time. She is so aggressive out there. She's a brilliant shot maker, Emma Cunningham. And we saw that when she was with us. I think it was the Pairs Cub. It was one of the Monday night events either way. And she made a couple of doubles that were absolutely outrageous. That's another one to the collection. a big shot here. Tough cut down the rail. I'm not sure if she can play it straight and play the double. She does like a double. Already shown that today. Oh, bang. Emma Cunningham is doubling off lampshades here in the Champions League. Wookie's lost count of the amount of doubles that Emma Cunningham's nailed in this one. Yeah, I'm not sure that was a strange way of playing that shot if he was taking the pot on. Maybe he was just trying to leave the angle on the one to the bottom right, one past the eight ball to go and open things up. I, what I would dearly love is if we were in some kind of movie here and get some Rain Man star graphics on Chris Mellon's <laughs> antics around the table. What's he looking at here? He's gone oh, close. Man. Oh, stop it! It's just ridiculous how often he can do that. Well, if he was right behind that as a pot into the centre pocket, we'd be talking about how tight and tricky it was. But he couldn't even see the ball. That was ridiculously good. The shot that Jake would have had if he paid, if he potted that previous shot would have been left centre and then this plant he's about to play. Very difficult, but it's a chance. Yeah, this would be some shot if he can take this out. Oh, some shot. Some shot. Yeah, look at where the yellow's gone as well. Absolutely perfect. A bit further off the cushion, but the key was making sure that the cue ball was close to that red. So to stop him being able to get the one cushion escape. When I say one cushion escape, I mean one cushion from the top cushion. So we're going to see two here from Jake. How close can he go? Oh, well, there's your answer. What a shot. He's still in trouble. Bottom right. Bottom right. Oh, Jake Dylan New Love. What a finish that is. Oh, that's incredible. What an out. What an out from Jake. <laughs> oh, Jake, that's incredible. He's played a couple of ridiculous shots in that frame. You're sort of saying, have a good go at this one. And good luck to you if you get it. I'm breaking off next. But if you don't get it, I'm going to win the frame. And she's going top left. Oh, what a shot. Oh, wow. What a shot that is.
A very good evening, everyone. Here we go then, the match you've all been waiting for. It's been set in stone now for the last sort of three or four hours. And you can see out there the arena is packed. Standing room only for legend versus legend. Chris Melling against Mick Hill, two players who earlier on in the day were the absolute top of their game. Fantastic performance and hoping to replicate it in this match of matches in the last 16 here in the Ultimate Pool Pro Series. It's Chris at the table first. Very good evening to all of you, especially those watching on YouTube for free. You'll get the first four frames in this one and then we'll be switching over to our exclusive coverage on Ultimate Pool. Do feel free to join us for the conclusion of this one if you're getting the free beat on YouTube. Steve Jameson here, joined by a man who knows these two very, very well. Dynamite Darren Appleton is with me on commentary for this one. Darren, first of all, very good evening to yourself. Yeah, thank you, Jamer. Really, really looking forward to this. And when you've got two players as good as this, how impressed are you that they're still at this level all these years mm. later? Yeah, it's, uh, it's like a trend, isn't it? I mean, back in the old days, like when we first started playing, when, when we were playing against guys like in their 30s, 35, 40, you're thinking, oh, these guys are past it, right? And it wasn't really the case, and it was the same in snooker. But for some reason, these last five, ten years, uh, the older guys in snooker and pool, they're still doing the business. So I don't quite know what it is. I think it's just ho the hunger, the, the self-belief, I think just the mentality change. Uh, yeah, and uh, it's, it's amazing that these guys are still up there as good as anybody uh, and it's the same with Snook with Ronnie Williams and Higgins and you've got the same in uh, in our game uh, yeah and obviously these two must have played each other like 70 80 times in their <laughs> career and they're still battling I remember these two probably played probably first time probably 25 26 years ago yeah a long old time now it's still still fighting Chris was in the studio with us earlier and talked about how Mick generally used to get the better mm. of him until mm. uh, a world championship final between the two and on ultimate pool certainly it's been Chris who's had the couple of rubs they had the Champions League final against each other towards the start of last year Mick defeated in that one by this man it's a top start from Chris Melling one break one clearance one nil yeah uh, I think this format of the ultimate pool has really it's a big advantage for Chris Melling because it's almost he, like he, he don't think the format, much anyway. Yeah, this is a perfect format for people like Chris Melling, Jordan Shepherd. Uh, the matches I have watched, especially last year, Mick Hill really struggled with the format. He was thinking too much because he's more a perfectionist, where Chris plays more on just instinct. Uh, so Mick took him a while to, to really get to terms with the format, but obviously this year he's doing really well. But he looks like he's got his hunger back for the game also. I, I, I think he, he lost that for a good few years. But I think because of what's happening, and good things are happening in the game, you can see that he's got that focus back, that desire, and he really wants to win because I know him really well. Yeah, I mean, he is a born winner, isn't he? I, I, oh. And I know he's he's almost battled sort of mentally with, with the last year where he's sort of, he put so much expectation on himself and he knows mm. other people expect him to do well as well that he's almost trying to put less pressure on going into events. But mm. I, don't, I don't think Mick Hill can be Mick Hill without that sort of, yeah. that level that he expects from himself. I think he, the, uh, the, the win that he got yeah. at the start of this season was so Massive, big for yeah. him, I think. I think he's found the right balance, uh, but end of the day, there's always going to be a lot of expectation on him from other people. Uh, and I think he's realised, look, I need to uh, put a bit of work in. Even if I just practice five, six hours a week, it's better than nothing, which I know he wasn't practising at all last year. Yeah. So he's putting a bit of work in. He's taking it a bit more serious. He's looked like he's got his hunger back for the game. And, I mean, for me, there's nobody what's ever played this game better than Mikkel, uh, especially when it comes to the patterns and the, the safety side of the game. Everything's clinical. So Chris, he relies on his flair, his natural talent. He's a shot maker. He's going to lose a cue ball here and there. Sometimes they get him in trouble. But when he's on, he can blow anybody away. So it's always a fascinating matchup between these two. Yeah, I, I completely agree. And I mean, big chance here for Chris to, to sort of land a bit of an early blow. Mick mm -hmm. Hill going dry off the break. And when you're talking about two lads who are at the level they're at and at the form they're in, mm -hmm. it could come down to that come the end yeah, of the match. Yeah, this it's is one of those matches where you want it to be a race to 21. So yeah, that both, 100%. So that you can really see them go at it but in this format two or three frames can get away from you without doing nothing wrong like there and if one guy gets three or four zero up in the race to seven it's very hard to, to come back uh, but if anybody can do it it's one of these two 
but yeah, Chris, uh, it's not easy here, but uh, obviously just the red next to the black and the red to the right hand side rail near the yellow, that makes this finish a little bit tricky. Yeah, I think the biggest thing, I mean, you talked about Chris's sort of flair and his, his sort of natural talent and all the rest of it. I don't think I've ever seen, and we get a brilliant insight to this when we have, when we're lucky to have Chris on commentary. Mm -hmm. One of the things that always amazes me is not just his vision on the game, because a lot of people have great vision, but his speed of the vision is yeah. unbelievable. I don't think I've ever met anyone who sees patterns and stuff it's quicker amazing, than he does. It's amazing, because when I listen to him commentating, I think he plays better patterns in the commentary box than he does on the table. <laughs> so he, he knows he the game himself, inside yeah. out, but because he's a little bit loose with the cue ball, he has to change his plan. Uh, but he's got such great ability to, to not... Uh, his biggest strength for me is his temperament. Like, he might come off from a match and let's say he'll uh, lose 7-6 seven, seven, or he wins 7-6 and he'll say I played great I says Chris you, you missed like 3 or 4 balls and he goes where so that's the good thing with Chris he's got a memory like a fish Yeah, yeah but that's a good thing for it's a pool player it's a good player, thing for a know. pool player 100% and that's his biggest strength he don't let mistakes affect him he showed his uh, vintage Chris Melling shot in his uh, earlier match against John Rowe full table <laughs> snooker and <laughs> took yeah, it off so with about <laughs> A thousand percent left hand side off the top rail and potted a red down this right hand side rail. Unbelievable shot and one from the Chris Melling special scrapbook. And he's played a lovely cannon there just to open up this frame. He needs to play this one nicely. Yeah, you're never quite sure what you're going to get with Chris. And a few events I have watched this year, he hasn't looked really, it's a bit patchy. But uh, I know him that well, I can see that he looks really good today. Yeah, he's he's oh, he's often quite hard on himself because it, it's sort of it. it you talked about the the old snooker lads there, like mm. so of Ronnie and Higgins and Williams and all the rest of it. And you quite often hear it in in interviews, mainly from Ronnie, mm. admittedly, because the other two won't admit mm. to it. But he'll he'll often say, "I'm nowhere near the level I was eight yeah. years ago," and that's what Chris says. Like, it, it's yeah. hard for me because I'm so I get I remember what I was like in 2006 when I was at my best. And I'm I'm not at that level. But you're watching him here today, and you're thinking, "This is one of the best players in the world." It's, yeah, it's a strange I mean one. He's it's just not as, it's probably not as uh, consistent as what it used to be, I'd say. But maybe that's down to his uh, his life away from pool. Obviously, he's doing other things besides play pool now. He's started a business, all that stuff. So I think things change with everyone, but you never lose it. He, he, he's doing enough to compete. Uh, but like, I mean, I remember Chris from 20 years ago. I mean, his cue actions changed a lot since then. Uh, and he's probably uh, not as... Uh, I, even though he's still a great potter, he doesn't pot as good as he used to, which which is crazy to say. Yeah. But I remember him like just making balls from everywhere. I mean, it didn't matter where the cue ball. He still now, does enough of he it. He still <laughs> does a lot of it, but yeah. he don't. I mean, he, I don't know if you watch him play American pool. He misses balls what he never used to miss. You know what I mean? So, it, but because he's that good, uh, he can get away with it. Because he can still play great with him not feeling good. So I think that's what he means really is that he don't feel as good as what he did probably 20 years ago. Uh, but because he's because he's that good, you you can mask it. Mm -hmm. and first you, you can still get over the line. Very down. Yeah, the first first few frames here have absolutely flown by. Yeah. Chris Melling in Three, yeah. in great touch. And breaking good as well. That's a nice break. Very nice break. Hit them really perfect time. And uh, just the black ball to worry about. Uh, the eight ball, right? <laughs> we don't call it black ball anymore. <laughs> So the eight ball. So, yeah. Should do a little check. Oh, it's just done it for me there. It only had two frames. Those of you on the, on oh, the four frame freebie on, on YouTube, don't panic. Only had two frames on. Oh, yeah, right. it's 2-0. <laughs> he's, uh, he's rattled off two in quick succession, but it wasn't quite as right, quick as three. Right, eight come up as three, so that's my apologies. Uh, so he's taking reds here, so he isn't worried about the black because he he's got a nice red to the bottom right hand corner. And he can use that to bring the black into uh, the eight ball into play. Yeah, it, you might have said three a moment ago. It'll say it in a, about a yeah. minute and a half's time, I think, here. These are in yeah. a good position here for Chris. Yeah, and he looks really up for this match. Uh, so, uh, yeah, it's a tough format. I mean, Mick could be like 4 5 zero down here without getting an opportunity. Uh, he's just got to stay patient and hope that uh, the chances come. 
It's not often you see the rest used on a 7x4 <laughs> table, but with his uh, snooker background, Chris Melling is never going to struggle using the rest. I don't think he has to use it very yeah, often on, on, uh, on this table. On this it's table. just about getting the cue ball where you want it. It's very hard to see uh, missing the ball, but just get the cue ball where you want it. It might bring the black into play, uh, the eight ball into play here. He's just opened it up so it goes in the corner, so that's even better. Yeah, I like that choice of shot. You just got a glimpse there of the uh, of t the other tables going on here in the ultimate pool arena. Got three tables on the go. Brilliant games on at the moment. Jack Whelan currently 4-1 up on Jake McCartney. He started like a train there. Has the wonder. And uh, also Craig Waddingham is 3-0 up as well in his quest for another ultimate pool quarterfinal. You can watch all those games live mm. on the Ultimate Pool app as Chris has just wow. gone a little bit far. That's the pace of the table there. Yeah, but I mean, he, he needs to be on the middle of the table. He's he can't him. believe where that's gone. Yeah, I mean, he's he's over it. He might have had a bit of a bounce, but he should be nowhere near there. He should be like, on the blue spot, let's say. In a little the bit of the, the check table. of the cushion as well. Yeah, <laughs> but he's overrun that by, what, three, four feet? Well, this is why we, but he's got we love uh, watching Chris Mellon. Well, he's landed pretty w nicely, really, for the for the double. Never in doubt. Yep. But he did land nicely. He got a little bit lucky to have that, really. I mean, if, if he lands twitched in between there, he wouldn't have had that shot. But he didn't turn out it to play the double and end get position. But he played it really well. Yeah, almost straightened up on him too much, but he's OK. All now then. Well, we're going to look at... Uh, I mean, this is uh, this this is one for you, Darren. A good old-fashioned kick shot. Yeah, this is your speciality. He's going to kick this here? in the middle pocket, and I'd say he's... Because uh, he's obviously... A, he plays American pool and we have a system for these shots. He's probably got 67% chance of making this. Yeah, so don't think I've don't ever seen anyone in English. He's at least 50-50 to make this shot. As good as Chris Melling off a rail. Yeah. Ooh. He's just a little bit short there. But it was so careless I wanted the previous shot. Yeah. But that's Chris Melling, you're just never quite sure. He always gives you that little bit of hope, does Chris. For some reason, he can make an easy finish look a little bit tougher than what it should be. Uh, like when he's flying, obviously we all know what he can do, but he does give you those little uh, them them little gifts like that, and that's what Mick needed. Well, Mick's also put him in a world of trouble here. Even Chris Manley's going to struggle to get out of this snooker. Well, just hitting the blocks, great. But yeah. to make it as well, I mean, uh, that'd be Well, usually Chris <laughs> is playing to obviously pop the ball, and he, yeah, he still yeah. will be, but he'll be thinking this is a big odds against well, one. Yeah. Uh, um, if he gets uh, hit it hard and get good contact, and oh, good things happen. He's actually trying to cut it in the corner. Where to me, that's one of those situations where you just got to make sure you eat it really hard because it it might bank it might bank the uh, eight the, the eight into the bottom left if he eats it really hard. Where he's trying to cut that eight ball in. If he would have made that, that would have been the shot of the year. And to be fair, he wasn't miles away. No, he was not. Well, here we go then, Mikkel. This now is a massive frame for Mick. He's mm. a very good chance to. Uh, to get it done, but he'll be delighted to be coming back to the table now. Yeah, and he's got the option to play just another little snooker here, which I think is the right shot, but he's thinking, oh, do, I, do I let Chris have another go at this eight ball? <laughs> but this is the right shot against most people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and he, I mean, he does know Chris very, very well, and he, kno he knows the risk that he's running here. Yep. Now he's got a more realistic chance of making it. Uh, two cushions. Yeah, two cushions up to the top right. So what he's using here is what we call the mirror image. Uh, it's very hard to explain, so we're not going to go into it, but if you ask Chris about it, he'll explain it to you. <laughs> if you see him about. He won't be milling. Oh, so that's just come a bit short. Yeah, I expect that to slide a little bit more than it did. Yep. So Mick Hill now has an open table to go at. Well, I'm glad you mentioned that, Darren, because on the Ultimate Pool app where the rest of this oh. match can, can be watched. If you're oh. watching on YouTube, you can watch the Chris Melling Masterclass where he, oh. he guides me through his, his kicking systems, getting out of snookers, enjoyable hour with him. And yep. it is honestly, it, it's like watching real life wizardry yeah. uh, at work. It, yeah, it is astonishing. He likes to share his knowledge. and uh, Not all of it, because yeah, some of, course, of it has yeah, to be yeah. the secret source. Yeah, but yeah definitely. Yeah. But he obviously, he's, he's learned a lot from American pool players and uh, obviously studied the game. And that's where he's going from. I mean, Do you uh, find that as well when you I sort of moved from eight ball to nine ball that, that you had that American influence and it really changed the way that you used obviously the the rails and, and the kick yeah, shot and all the rest time, of it. Yeah, big time. Like when I played the Supreme series, I'm not allowed to mention that. Oh, uh, absolutely. And yeah. I come back to English eight ball for like a year. My my kicking and 
the safety play and coming out of snookers was like unbelievably miles better than what it was when I played yeah. English eight ball for a living and it's a massive advantage to have and I think that's a big thing what Chris has brought to his game since he's uh, started playing English eight ball again uh, and I think a lot of the other guys can learn a lot from it because uh, you might only win one or two extra games during the tournament but it can make a huge difference oh, like kicking can. crazy balls in you know what I mean it's so gone about these nicely and mm. I, I suppose that the, the thing that I love the most about these two great players and they truly are two, two of the best to ever play the game mm. is they are so brilliantly different oh, yeah. it's a real styles clash between them no, uh, no favouritism at all but the way that Mick plays is, is so different but so so effective yeah it's a weird one because back, back in the old days I mean Mick had his number big time uh, for some reason and Chris never looked comfortable playing him but in recent years I've seen them play it looks like oh, Chris started to get more wins against him than what he used to do uh, I think as you get older you just sort of think well that rivalry is probably not as intense as what it was back then and it's still there but I think they have so much respect for each other so they just probably just go out and enjoy the game more than anything well, here's the last 16 as it stands at the moment. Carl Sutton getting through Jordan Shepard, as we talked about with Sean Chibberfield earlier. Jake McCartney is one a frame back against Jack Whelan. That is now 4-2. Gareth Potts getting through Stevie Dempsey, 7-4. Craig Waddingham is flying against Danny and Lee. He's been a really good nick. 5-0 up is Craig Waddingham. Still to come on our two outside tables. We've got Adam Basu versus Dave McNamara and Greg Batten against Sean Storey. Mm, nice to see Carl Sutton doing well. Yeah, I don't think he's had the great. No, it, it's been now. brilliant to see Carl return to form a little bit this weekend. Mm. Yeah, he's a good player, tidy player, but uh, for some reason things haven't been going his way. But with this field and this format, it can easily get away from you. Well, that's the thing. You can run into absolutely anyone in that first round, and all of a sudden your weekend comes to a very abrupt halt. The game's all about confidence. You look at someone like Steve Dempsey, he's playing with confidence, he's getting those little flicks, everything's going his way. Obviously, he lost to Gareth earlier, but look, no shame in that. Uh, but yeah, you can see when someone's feeling really good about the game and the way they're talking off the table. When I've been taking, speaking to some guys today and they're saying, I'm really struggling, what shall I do? And I just said, look, you just got to play through it. It's a come, you've just got to be patient, haven't you? Well, Wait I'm, your I, turn. <laughs> I, I wanted to ask you about that. This is your first time at an Ultimate Pool event. And I wanted to ask you, how much you enjoyed it? You had your first day here mm. now and you've, see, you've seen the setup, you've seen mm. what's... I mean, there's hundreds of people milling yeah, about this yeah. place with, with a queue in hand. What, what have you made of it? Yeah, it's great. I've seen people I haven't seen for 20 years, 10 years, 50, uh, 15 years, like a lot of faces. What I've, they've changed a lot, obviously, over the years. And then uh, guys, what I know really well, but I just don't see them anymore. So, yeah, it's great. And the setup, I was uh, really impressed with the setup. Uh, and just the old vibe, really. Like, even away from the table, people don't see what, what goes on behind the scenes is. Uh, pretty impressive and then you've got all the booths here uh, so yeah ev ev everything's heading in the, di the right direction where uh, the game's been like crying out for, for like since I started playing uh, nearly 30 years ago yeah of course you you were a big time English eight ball player before moving over to the nine ball of course where you've, you've had unbelievable success but did it almost feel you a little bit of heart to see English eight ball it's always seen mm. as a bit of an underdog in, yeah, in sort definitely, of recent years to be sort of uh, punching up again the, my first love really isn't yeah it? <laughs> so you, you never lose that love and the passion for the game uh, but yeah I mean I just sort of walked away because nothing was happening I'm thinking I, I can't do this for another 5 10 15 years if, if this is what it's going to be uh, so I, I just had to find a, a different career path uh, which worked out great for me was no guarantee uh, I always said that I'd never say never about coming back to the game, but obviously it's difficult with the scheduling and everything. But, uh, but seeing this, it definitely gave me a bit of temptation to maybe jump back in there, but we'll see. Love to hear it. Yeah. Love to hear it. And obviously no. these guys are doing well, so. They are. I'm, gives, I'm sure it gives, it gives the juices flowing again. Yeah, well, Mick yeah, was Mick doing well until yeah. he's run aground here a little bit. Yeah, and it's very rare that he, he snookers himself or runs that position. Maybe a little bit unlucky, maybe a little careless. So. The only real shot I can see is a Massé. Try and come off the cushion and make it that way. So he's playing a kick shot. Yeah, play it was terrible. tough coming from yeah. that side cushion, wasn't it? Yeah, he had no choice there. So again, uh, it looks like Chris is going to get one back here. So that's big. And Mick won't be happy because he is a, the perfectionist. Yeah, I heard a great word used to describe him earlier. Um, 
and it was it was purist. Yeah. You know, Mick, Mick almost plays a different game to the rest oh, of us. Yeah. He, he he's annoyed. He, there was points in that game against Hinton Patel where he went seven one, mm. and he, he he came to the table seven times, won seven frames. Mm. And there was points where he was visibly annoyed because he hadn't played the perfect shot, and he had to work a little bit harder. Yeah, to well, I know Mick really well. He's one of my best mates. He's a bit OCD. So, and it's got a lot bit worse over the years. So he, he, he was your OG practice partner yeah, back in the day, I mean, Mikhail, wasn't he? We did everything together. He lived with me for quite some time and everything. We practiced together. I mean, yeah, it was amazing. And uh, I've seen him come up from 16, 17. And the first time I ever saw him, I thought, this kid's going to be world champion. Probably the, the best talent I've ever seen. Do you think he was going to get six there? Well, <laughs> you just never know, do you? Obviously, uh, uh, while I was on the scene, I think he had two. But then, obviously, we know there was a breakaway association. So, yeah, I mean, still great to win six. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, it's and he sort of got them quite later in his career, really. I think yeah. up to, like, the age of 30, 32, he had maybe one or two, and then he's obviously kicked on in the, in the past, let's say, six, seven years. I, f I believe he's won about four of them. So, yeah, I always thought he'd win a few, but you're obviously never quite sure how many. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So Chris, this is a, 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 a nice to get this one back after the mistake in the previous frame. Yeah, they're one apiece on mistakes now, but it's going to be three-one to Melling on the scoreboard. Yeah, and they both look good, so I don't think there's going to be too many more mistakes like that. Yeah, you wouldn't be surprised if the match sort of at this stage, if you went from here to the end of the match and there was no more errors. That's the sort of level that these lads can play at. And that's the reason why Mick sat in his chair with a grimace, because he knows that. He knows mm. that mistake might be costly come the end of the match, and we're a long way away from well, that. Just look at his face. You can see how much he wants it, which I love that. I haven't seen that in him for like the past few years. Uh, but if there's one little weakness with Mick, is that sometimes he lets that annoyance affect his game, and then he, if he's not getting good position in the next frame, then he starts getting a little bit annoyed, gets a bit flustered. That's the only little slight weakness I've ever found in his game. <laughs> Trust me, I, I know him inside out. <laughs> it's a very small weakness, and that's the only one he's probably got. Uh, er everything else is as strong as anybody in the world. And like we said with Chris, like we know what he can do. He's probably the best shot maker ever at English 8-ball. 